Hey everybody, I'm going to go through the previews now. I'm going to go through Image. Maybe I'll do the uh, other part of the Marvel one a little bit later. Everything. But it's mostly uh, trade paperbacks and stuff like that. The stuff that's already out. I like to do newer stuff. I may change it and just do uh, just two parts of the Marvel one. But this is December and everything coming out in February. Nice cover there. I'll just jump straight to it. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they have over here. I want to get right into Image. There's a bunch of stuff coming out, and I think this um, Radiant Black is coming out tomorrow. So I want to try to get um, a review in it, of it, or just to go through and let you see that it's coming out here and talk about it. Here's Radiant Black number one, and it looks like it might be pretty good. Always, anytime it starts out like, like teen heroes or young heroes or something like that, girl, guy, whatever, it's kind of cool. So like Spider-Man and all the different stuff. Um, all the other heroes that came out, Miles Morales, you think about all of the different characters that came out, um, Speedball, and you, you name it, um, all the different characters that came out that were new and younger. I can't remember all of them. I, I see them in my head, but trying to remember all of them. But this looks really cool. Kyle Higgins is writing it. Gym of the Month, it says. It's coming out tomorrow, February 10th. Series premiere. So here's the cover there, Radiant Black. There's some variant covers here. Cover B, cover C, it's going to be blank, and cover D and cover E. I'm not sure if the values of them are more. You can probably check on uh, Midtown Comics or any other comic book store that's going to be getting them. And I'm, I'm not sure if there's going to be more of them. You think unknown comics? I wonder if they would uh, do something with this and all the other different comic book stores that are out there. So online you can get stuff. So um, let's see what it's saying. It's a science fiction superhero. For fans of Invincible and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, comes a brand new ongoing series from acclaimed writer Kyle Higgins and artist Marcelo Costa that reinvents superheroes for a new generation. Nathan Barnett, or Burnett has just turned 30. Okay, he's a little bit older. And things aren't great. He's working and failing at two jobs. His credit card debt is piling up and his only move is moving back home with his parents. But when Nathan discovers and unlocks the ethereal, cosmic radiant, he's given the power to radically change his fortunes. There's just one problem. The powers don't belong to him, and the cosmic beings who created them want them back by any means necessary. Wow. That's kind of like the God, uh, what was it, God book that was really good. They wanted the sword back. Everything. The new superhero series for the millennium, millennial generation and perfect for fans of Invincible and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Now, I wonder if this would take off. You sit there and you know what happened with Invincible and it did well. And who knows? You see, this is something you could be looking at right now. Here he is in the street, a, little, a few pages um, from the book it is has in here. So there it is, something's coming in. So, it's so awful, man. You don't even know what's like seeing all these people that, that don't ever do anything cool. You just said this place is great. It is, it is. Now that you're back, we're going to hang out all the time and catch up on movies, and we can finally write together. Remember that action thing we did, we're going to do in high school? Maybe I can help you with your book. Uh, yeah, maybe. It's gonna be so awesome, dude. Really, just as soon as you tell me. What the heck is that? Look at this. What the heck that is? <laughs> Something zooming in. Okay. Huh? I have no idea. Well, the fact that we both see it, that's a good start. Is it like some kind of signal projection for, for the railroad? It's levitating. Dude, check it out. It looks the same from every angle. This is so weird. It's like a mini black hole or something. That's impossible. It's got to be a trick of the light. Uh-oh, you don't never touch stuff. Uh, wait... What is this? It, it, it's doing something. Ka-ting! Nathan! 
Uh oh, now he's changing into something here. Dark Hawk. No. <laughs> That's it. We'll see what he's gonna see what he's gonna become. Stray Dogs number one. Gym of the month comes out on the seventeenth. Horror. Wow. It looks like a uh, a Disney movie here. Look at this. Stray Dogs. Oh, that might give it up right there. This cover here, like Hannibal. Silence of the Lambs. Stray Dogs, and then you got a blank cover here. So what's it saying? A series premiere. One of you never know about this either. It's scary being the new dog. Sophie can't remember what happened. She doesn't know how she ended up in the in this house. She doesn't recognize any of these other dogs. She knows something terrible happened, but she just can't recall. Wait, where's her lady? Uh oh. The five issue. Don Bluth style suspense thriller by My Little Pony comic artist Tony Flex and Trish Fornster. For Forstner, that's it. Stray Dogs is the lady in the tramp meets Silence of the Lambs. See, that's what I was talking about. My favorite thing about comics is when someone shows you something you didn't know you needed. The Secret Life of Pets meets Seven. Hmm, meets Seven? Yes, please. Welcome to Stray Dogs. I was blown away. Brian Michael Bendis. Wow. Hollywood News. Paramount Animation has picked up the rights to upcoming horror comic book Stray Dogs. Set in game night, scribe Mike Perez, or Mark Perez, to write the script. Gary Duberman, the horror filmmaker who counts the Annabelle and It movies along among his writing credits, is set to produce via his banner, Coin Operated. Source the Hollywood Reporter. Wow. So this is already option. Look at this. How can it be horror? What is it gonna be about? I mean you see like the pictures like this, you think horror? Master Food. Okay, okay, back up. We got a surprise. <laughs> Come on, get the page. There we go. Oh, look how cute. <laughs> it's okay, girl. It's okay. You're safe now. The rest of you be nice. I'll bring some food in a bit. Well, look at all of them. New. New dog. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Ooh. No. Yep, going on the newspapers, they're all sleeping in there. Sophie? Sophie? No, stop! Hey! Wow. They must have kidnapped her or something like that. I wonder what happened. We'll have to get the book and find out, huh? And this one's coming out. This one's out by now, I guess. It says February 3rd, Deep Beyond, number one of 12. I think I saw the cover. I didn't pick it up, though. I wasn't sure. Maybe I'll go back and get it. You never know. Science fiction, action, and adventure, it says, series premiere. In an underpopulated future Earth, devastated by the dire consequences of the Millennium Bug, the survival of mankind and maybe of the planet itself is handled by a small number of people talented scientists who, despite the adverse situation and the stupid feuds that continue to divide the small number of people still alive, try to understand and study what is hidden in the depths of the abyss. Something mysterious and dangerous, which could eventually cause an even worse and more destructive catastrophe. Wow. Okay. The 100 meets low. With a hint of Death Stranding and the brand new sci-fi thriller series from acclaimed writer, creator, Merkel and Dolfo, teaming up with writer David Goy and rising star artist Andrea Bracardo, colorist Barbara Nocenzo, and colorist, and colorist, okay, from the best-selling creator behind Cell's hits Unnatural and Mercy, 
comes a science fiction story filled with dread and perfect for fans of Low. All right. I got a few copies of Low, but I haven't read it yet. Deep in the North Atlantic Ocean, near Washington, D.C. Shh, shh. What in the world's going on there? Click, shh. Let, let's try again. J just one more t t time. Mayday, I repeat, Mayday. This is Dr. Bell. Is anybody there? Shh. Cur Nothing. Which means this is my last message. Hopefully someone hears it sooner or later. So you, you get to hear my last words. Do you remember when we were children, we visited that field of clovers? It was the last time we really talked. I, I was too proud. Well, it's too late, unfortunately. I regret I didn't look for you. And now I can't think about anything else but... Shh, huh? I wonder what's going on there. I'm about to pick this up. I, this might be pretty good. Uh oh, look at this. Shh, ah! Crack. Oh my gosh, man. The day after. Hey, come on. It's not like this has to be the end of the world. As long as we don't panic. Am I right, guys? Sure, it's all going to be fine. Halt. Document control. You're kidding, right? Just doing our job. We check every single guest, every time. It's for everyone's safety. They're right. Jeff, let it go. For real, you're, you're making me nervous, and I'm already nervous enough. He can pass. You can't. But protecting him is our job. And if you let us do our job, he won't need protecting once he's inside. We've got six of our best people in there. It's fine. En enjoy the break, guys. Okay, what's going on here? Hmm... Okay, now we got a new book, Two Moons, number one, February 24th, Horror Western. Hey, I like those. Those are kind of scary, just in the past and stuff like that. See what's going on. Look at this dude. Woo, he looks scary, don't he? Let's see, now we got variant covers down there, cover B and cover C, the blank one. So we got in there two, two half moons, not a full moon, so maybe not werewolves or anything like that. Let's see, Rumble and BPRD, writer John Arcardi, Arcudi, is back at Image with Rising Star, Valerio, G and Giordano, for an all-new ongoing horror series. This issue starts the long journey of a young Pawnee man named Virgil Morse, a.k.a. Two Moons, fighting for the Union during the Civil War, when he is suddenly confronted with his shamanic roots. He discovers horrors far worse than combat as the ghosts of his past reveal the monster's evil around him. Ooh, boy. The lush historic details and world-building of Manifest Destiny paired with the creature feature horror elements of American Vampire. Wow, I liked Manifest Destiny. Oh, that's a cool cover there. Look at the pictures and everything. Uh oh there's a ghost image there. Unclaimed by the land that is Boris, lost in the land, we find the brave have gone before us, cowards are left behind. Then stand to your glass, then stand to your glasses steady. Here's a health to those we prize. Here's a toast to the dead already. And here's to the next who dies. Whoa. Uh-oh, what in the world's that? I kind of mean... That's kind of like Ajin. If you've seen the Ajin series on Netflix. The Ajins, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good show. Okay, now what we got going on? No, they're sneaking in. This kid's sleeping. 
at a kid or a woman? Uh oh. No! Hey, Virgil. Finally going to join the war? Wow. And a nightmare there. Heck, it's well past dawn, Levon. Levon? Why'd you let me sleep? Put that Kansas toothpick away. Unless you plan to shave. If that chin of yours ever sprouts. Corporal Hatlow. Is this the man who is to ride with you into Sturrett? Yes, Major. Fine, fine. Ain't but the one casualty. Will we be dangerous low on field dressings? You haul back plenty here. This guy looks wild. Yes, Sergeant. Morphine, too? All egg and spare. A red push is coming soon, Corporal. A red bush. A red cush. A red push is coming soon, Corporal. What in the world? Okay. Arai Heavenly Creatures. One shot. February 17th. Arai Heavenly Creatures. That's a cool picture. Araya, Araya, Araya. Very cool covers. Let's say Casada. I knew that looked familiar. Artwork and everything. 56 pages. Fantasy. Lady Kildare, expatriate princess of fairy, is living a life of aristocratic decadence among Victorian London's social elite. One night, while slumming among the city's notorious underbelly, Kildare and her companions come across an illicit underground sideshow boasting creation's most wondrous and perverse cur curiosities. The centerpiece of this bizarre menagerie, a genuine angel held in captivity. This sets the stage for an unlikely, unlikely alliance and the beginning of an unforgettable tale of mystery, adventure, and retribution. Previously published in 2000 under a different title. Wow. Okay, now we got some. Look at the, this. I don't remember any of this, any of these books, but this, like I said, it's a facsimile version of um, some early stuff with Savage Dragon, and that's really cool. Graphic Fantasy Number One, Facsimile Edition. Eric Larson's doing it. Writer, artist, and cover. Wow. Comes out February 3rd, so it's out already. I missed this one. I didn't see it on the shelf that, that I can remember. I went to two, like, half, or I didn't see it at Half Price Books, but um, it may be there. But Pack Rat and uh, Laughing Oak, I have to check them out and see if it's still there. Maybe sold out. We'll see. Okay, here's two books here Revenge. One of the most valuable and hardest to find Savage Dragon comics of all time is the 1982 fanzine Graphic Fantasy, where the dragon made his first appearance. This book is long out of print and highly sought after and completely un unobtainable for most collectors until now. This deluxe version reprints, reprints this rare book in glorious full color with full newsprint effects. Number one introduces Paul Dragon and a host of then new characters. Okay, we got Prism, Iron Hawk, and the Dragon. Cool. Now down here we got Graphic Fantasy Number Two Facsimile Edition. Eric did everything again. Come out on the third. This one's possessed. So we got one of the most valuable and hardest to find Savage Dragon comics of all time is this is the 1982 fanzine Graphic Fantasy where the Dragon made his first appearance. All the same stuff. This book is long out of print and highly sought after and completely unattainable for most collectors until now. This deluxe version reprints the rare book in glorious full color. This rare book in, in glorious full color with full newsprint effects. Number two continues Paul Dragon's early adventures. Wow. Okay. Let's see what else we got coming up now. Okay, these are image first. How many of these do you have? Die seemed like it went pretty good. I'm not sure if it's going down or not. I remember Gideon Falls, I got number one of that. Philadelphia, I found it in Half Price Books. Mercy, Undiscovered Country, I got that one. The Old Guard, I got that. 
gave away some as prizes. And a cinder, I didn't get this one, I got descender though. Then we got over here, spawn, got that. That one, monstrous. Pa Paper Girls is a good story. Invincible, I wish I'd have got that when it came out. They don't have that one. Oblivion Song, Oblivion Song, I got that. I got Saga. Snot Girl, I found some of those. Deadly Class, I got that. And Ice Cream Man, I, I, I speculated on that one, and I'm glad I did. Because that that's a good story. Good, Weird, weird stuff going on in that. So like I said, you look at these and you wonder, okay, when you see the new stuff, you wonder what's going to be good. So I'll have to check it out. They say, what can you get for a dollar? Try out the hottest Image Comics series on the shelf with Image First. Low-priced dollar editions of popular number one issues. Perfect for readers interested in sampling a variety of new series without feeling the effects on their wallet. Like, like what you read. Add the series to your pool list and jump on board for the rest of the ride. Nines issues new to the program. Hmm. I got Jupiter's Legacy too. I remember when that came out because I like him. Um, is it Gary Frank? Oh no, it's not Gary Frank's artwork. I forget. Uh, if it is, I, I forget what his name is. But I like that artwork. No, that's not Gary Frank. I didn't forget his name. You know what it is. Put it down in the comments and everything. But this is this was artwork and Monsters is really good as well. So and, and Die was nice. But Saga Saga had a weird look, but um. It, it took off. Same thing in uh, Ice Cream Man. And this is a TV show. I'm not sure. I haven't watched any of it, though. So I don't know. I was wondering whether Oblivion Song was going to take off and do well as well. But I don't think so. And it's up to, uh, high in issues right now. So, And this, I can't wait for this TV show. It's going to, is it going to be on Amazon Prime, I think? I can't wait to see that. It's going to be good. Invincible. Ooh, look at this one. Write It in Blood. Original graphic novel. Trade paperback. Okay, it comes out on the 24th. It's more thrillers. Crime and mystery, it says. Whoa, nice cover. Oh, man. Look at that sky. On the eve of their retirement, two hitmen, Cosmo and Arthur Price, drive through the Texas countryside with the infamous Little Harkness in the trunk of their car. The brothers are meant to deliver Harkness to their boss. But matters become complicated when Arthur's recklessness jeopardizes Cosmo's retirement plans and puts a target on their backs. A tragic comic crime tale of family loyalty and broken dreams from Rory McConville and Joel Palmer. A crime drama that plays out on the character level. An intriguing web of connections and mismatched personalities, complete with beautifully stark storytelling from Palmer, Ola Halloran, and Atmaz, or Atzmain Elhu, Al Ewing. Hmm. A great looking Fargo esque tale of hitman, hit men. Rory McConville's A Crime Voice to Watch, Rob Williams. Dead Eyes meets Pulp in this standalone graphic novel thriller. Wow. Roll Texas. Oh man, shot each other something. He's out. Do you think he's gonna get us a retirement present? We'll see what that means. What? Like like a gold watch or something? A watch? It's just an example. What? Cosmo, he's not getting us a watch. Well, he might. He's not. He's not getting us anything. We'll see. I would if I were him. I think it'd be a nice gesture. Goodness. This guy's heavy. Yeah, they got cuss words in there. What about us? Do you think we should get him something? No, I don't. I just want to make sure this there isn't some expectation. No one is getting anyone a present. Where do you even... Oh, crap. Missed one. Oh, boy. Two hitmen. Now, 
Now we got Death or Glory. Prestige Edition hardcover. Rick Remender, one of my favorite writers. This started off really good. I got, I think, the first two issues. I, I'd like to pick them up because I'd like to read them. Maybe I could just buy this because I, I liked um, the first story, what she was going, what she was doing. May 26th, this comes out. Advanced Solicit is this. Okay. This one is um, 320 pages. Wow. Collecting issues 1 through 11. Meet Glory, a young woman raised off the grid and a convoy of truckers, the last men and women fighting for freedom, for true freedom, on the American open road. Now, in order to save her father's life, Glory has three days to pull off four dangerous cross-country heists with mob killers, crooked cops, and a psycho ex-husband, all out to bring her in, or die trying. Time, fuel, and hope may be in short supply, but no one outruns Glory. Wow. An oversized prestige hardcover collects the complete runaway smash hit from New York Times bestselling author Rick Remender and legendary French artist Bengal. Nothing but blood pumping action for nearly a dozen issues. Comicbook.com. Rick Remender and Bengal have knocked it out of the park, and I can't recommend this comic enough. Bleeding cool. Death or Glory is definitely a high-octane speed chase of a story with plenty of shootouts, but it's also a reflection of what it means to live as part of the invisible underclass and how expensive poverty can be. The Nerdist. Cool. Like I said, it started off really good. She had problems right from the beginning. Now we got a trade paperback here. The Department of Truth, Volume 1, The End of the World, trade paperback. February 24th, this comes out. Cool cover. And we got, it's a thriller horror. And this collects the, the Department of Truth 1 through 5. Special low introductory price of $9.99. Cole Turner has studied conspiracy theories all his life, but he isn't prepared for what happens when he discovers that all of them are true. From the JFK assassination to flat earth theory and reptilian shapeshifters, one organization has been covering them up for generations. What is the deep, dark secret behind the Department of Truth? From best-selling writer James Tinian, the fourth, and breakout artist Martin Simmons. Generally, one, generally, genuinely, one of the best comics you'll you'll read this year. Don't miss out. Don't miss it. Do not miss it. There we go. Scott Snyder did that. The story of our. For our Zeke guest, Zeke Geist, Simmons, art invokes Bill Sinkowitz. Hmm. A wonderfully dizzy mixture of Men in Black, John Carpenter, Stephen King, The Matrix, and 1970s conspiracy thrillers, Forbes. It is fantastic. Can't wait to read the whole series. Patton Oswalt. A new conspiracy thriller comic. That should appeal to anyone with a fondness for the X-Files, IGN. The hype on this is real, Brian Michael Bennis. Hickmanian Conspiracy Games, Borosian Crime, Sinkowitzian Style, The Truth You Want It, Kieran Gillian. <laughs> Some of the words and everything they come out with and they make up stuff, you got to sit there and read it and try to get it right. So... Here we go, we got another one. Scene of the Crime Trade Paperback, Ed Brubaker. February 17th, this is coming out. Nice cover. Crime and Mystery. Back in print as a first trade ever trade paperback comes Lost Crime Noir Masterpiece Long Out of Print scene of the crime. Was the first time Ed Brubaker and Michael Lark worked together before their acclaimed runs on Daredevil and Gotham Central and was inked by Sean Phillips, who has designed this edition. This is where it all began, with a hard-hitting mystery story set in modern-day Chinatown that garnered nominations for Best Miniseries and Best Writer in the 2000 Eisner Awards. Also included in this new collection are behind-the-scenes art and stories. I love that stuff. A new Ford by Brubaker and many other extras. Very cool. I'm going to stop right there, and I'll start again with the other one. will be part two. So you guys have a great day. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're going to be getting. You guys have a great day, and Collector Dude is out.